Hey guys, Tom Mobile back again. This is a follow-up video to my two months review of the Google Pixel 6. Obviously, right after I released the video, Google finally released the Pixel 6 update for January. So now I'm gonna go back and addressing some of the updates that may have changed from my previous review. If you haven't already, please take a moment to check out the full review video right here. And so far so good with the new updates. There's definitely a lot of quality of life improvement. In particular, the fingerprint sensor issue that I had within the past is much better at this point. It pretty much works as it should. And I do not need to try it several times just to get it to adjust and work properly. Google initially said they made it slower by design for security purposes, but no one was really asking for that. I'm glad that they did finally push this update across to fix that issue. Although the phone did release back in October, it is now January. So it took about three months, but better late than never. Either way, if you're new here, please take a moment to like and subscribe if you like seeing contests like these. I like to do in-depth phone reviews and cover them from different angles that not a lot of big channels do cover. If you are like me, I personally enjoy watching every single video in the world about a phone before I decide to buy it. And then after I bought it, I like to watch more videos to validate my purchases. The problem with a lot of the big review channels is they tend to do a quote unquote full review after using the phone for about a couple weeks. And as you can see here, even after my full two months of using it, they finally released an update after that and addresses a lot of the complaints that I had about the phone. It's hard to get a full sense of owning a phone unless you use it for more than a month. Take for example, with this Google Pixel 6, my biggest complaint has always been the fingerprint sensor. But now that it is fixed, there's really not much for me to complain about it anymore. Overall, it's still a pretty good phone and I'm quite happy with it. And now I'm actually using the Galaxy S21 Fan Edition more often and I do notice that on the Fan Edition, it is slightly slower in different scenarios as well. So I'm actually, on a day-to-day -day basis, I think the Pixel 6 has been a smoother experience in terms of software and navigation. With the new update, I did notice it is a little bit faster, snappier, and more fluid. The battery life is improved as well. Although I'm not using it as a daily driver, I do notice that when I leave it laying around, it actually lasts for more than a day while just laying there idled. At the same time, my SIM card is not in there anymore. So it's a little bit hard to judge there. When I'm done with the fan edition, I might go back and play around with it a little bit more. But just on the surface, the update seems like it addressed some of the battery issues that people were having. But even before with all those battery issues going on, I was pretty happy with it in terms of battery life. I was still getting my eight to nine hours, which is enough for a work day. And throughout the day, if you just charge it a little bit more, that will last you pretty much the rest of the day. But now with a new update, I can see you getting like a couple more hours, which is good. Ironically, I don't think I ever updated my phone for the December update. I know with some people, if you never updated your phone back in November, this January update is going to be about a 200 megabyte update. And if you already updated in December, it's only going to be a 50 megabyte updates. Either way, I would assume that if there was a new update, it would kind of keep popping up and showing. But that wasn't the case. I actually had to go into the settings and look for it and then do the update. But before you do that, make sure your phone is charged, I don't know, at least 30 to 50% or something and plugged in as it's updating. Because initially when I attempt to go and update my phone, it was about 10% or so. And it would not update until it is charged to a certain amount. So just something to keep in mind. And even after you finally hit the update button, just give it at least 30 minutes or more. It takes a while to kind of download the file, optimize all the apps. So just update the phone, go take a shower, eat dinner, use the bathroom, go for a walk or something and come back and hopefully it'll be done. It is often time takes longer than you would expect. And another issue that I think it did resolve which I was not aware was an issue in the first place is the volume rocker control issue for Chromecast. Apparently if you're casting from your phone, some of the issues people were having is that you couldn't control the volume on the Pixel 6, but apparently that is fixed now, which is good news. In terms of the fingerprint sensor itself, I think it is at a better place than the Galaxy S21 FE. It is at a pretty good position on the lower half, but it's a little bit higher. Versus the Galaxy S21 FE, you have to reach all the way to the bottom to unlock the phone. I do like the fingerprint placement here. 
My other complaint that I do have that I did not address in my previous video is the power button. I think it's actually a little bit high because after you unlock the phone, you would have to kind of reach around all the way to the top just to lock it again. I wish the power button was on the bottom and the volume rocker was on top. And I know in the original Pixel, they do have a different texture with the power button, which I do like. For some reason, they decided to get rid of that. I hope that they do decide to bring it back in the future. And another update that I wish that they will do in the future is just a Wi-Fi toggle. That is still kind of annoying for me. Every now and then you kind of have to turn off your Wi-Fi. If your internet is acting funky, sometimes you're going inside and outside, whether it's connecting to Xfinity, Wi-Fi, or some other random bandwidth that it's trying to search for and it gets confused. Sometimes you want to quickly just turn off your Wi-Fi, turn it back on and everything works normally again. It is much easier with all the other previous phone and even on the Galaxy S21 FE, you just hit the Wi-Fi toggle and then it turns off. But in this case, you have to turn off the Wi-Fi toggle and then the panel goes all the way down to the bottom of the phone. Then you would need to shift your hand down to the bottom, stretch your thumb all the way across to the other side and then turn off the Wi-Fi. That's like a three-step process when you could just simply hit the Wi-Fi toggle and it'll turn off. Not sure why they decide to do that with Android 12. Hopefully they'll fix that in the near future. But it's just something as simple as turning off the Wi-Fi is now a three-step process when it, could just, when it used to be just one tap. Other than that, overall, I think the update was pretty good. Let me know what you guys are experiencing with the new updates. I know I checked back in the comments as well. Some of you guys said everything's working normally the way it should. Not a lot of complaints there. I hope the update did fix a lot of issue for everyone. I know it did for me. And after I'm done using the Galaxy S21 FE, I'm likely gonna go back to the Pixel 6. But then again, the Galaxy S22 series is around the corner. So I likely want to give that a try as well. But so far, so good. I do like, I still like the price tag of the Pixel 6 and everything that it has to offer. But yeah, thank you for watching guys. Please like and subscribe and see you guys next time.